everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and on this week's episode I'm going to show you how we turn that into electric with this. Let's get into it. So what exactly is that? Well, it's a 911G body made between 1974 and 89 and this specific one is a very late one because it's 1988. And if you want to see the first episode we did on this, introducing the kind of series if you like, click on the link above. But this has all been stripped out now, so the engine gearbox is out, petrol tank is out, everything has been stripped out that we need to come out of the car and then what's gone in already is the low voltage loom from the kit behind you. So let's have a chat about the kit. Now before we go into the kit itself I just want to explain what you're seeing in front of you here now because this is our test bench and any kit we do from mini kits, Land Rover kits, Fiat 500 kits or Porsche 911 kits we have to get on our test benches, run them up and just make sure everything works. So this essentially is a 911 on a test rig if you like. We've got the instrumentation here, we've got direction, we've got brake, we've got even got a little seat and accelerator, accelerator pedal down there. So this tests all the functionality of our kit, including charging and a little new feature that we've introduced, which I'll come to in a minute. So now I think it's time to run you through the 911 kit. Right, I'm gonna reverse a little bit now because you've seen what the kit looks like when it's finished, but there's a lot of fabrication that goes into our 911 kits and I just wanna show you some of that on the floor here because this kit here is about to go for powder coating. Now, rear battery box and motor cradle is what's here. This is where the engine and gearbox would normally sit on a 911, so that replaces that. Bolts in at the back there, bolts uh, at the front here. This cradle changes for the pre-73 911s, because this is a G-body one, yes it is, this is a G-body kit. So this cradle here, this bit here would change if it's a pre-73. Um, it also supports large Tesla drive units and small Tesla drive units, because not everybody wants that huge amount of power with a, with a big LDUs on the back. Uh, over there and over here you've got some bracketry for low voltage sort of things. That's the vacuum pump mounts here. Chargers and a header tanks go on the top, I'll show you that in a minute. Lots of other bracketry here for controllers and other low voltage things. Come on, somebody, you're going to have to move. Uh, and then over here, so we support left hand drive and right hand drive 911s obviously. So here you've got the accelerator pedal and brake switch for a left hand drive because this is going to the States once it's finished. And then just picked up over here to show you a complete different because that is the same but for a right hand drive 911. So yeah, a lot different. Uh, lots of other 911, um, lots of other low voltage uh, things there. Um, this is the CCS socket mount. Uh, all of this gets bolted in, by the way. Even things like this all bolts into existing brackets and mounts that are on the car. No drilling, no welding, nothing. This all just bolts in. And the same for this. This essentially is, I wish our European CCS chargers sockets were this small, but this is a CCS type one. That's for the US market. And then this is the cowl that goes over it to protect it because that essentially sits um, on the left uh, wing. And then this goes underneath there to protect any cables coming out. So this goes underneath the rear wing. And then finally, we have the rest of the battery pack. So we've got 50% of it at the rear, 50% at the front, and total is 60 kilowatt hours. So that's fabrication sort of things. This is what it looks, in its, looks like in its raw format back to the test bench to show you how it works. So, in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I prepared earlier, because this is the finished article, if you like. It's all powder coated, it's got the batteries in, everything is in place. You've got the uh, low voltage PDU here, so there's your relays, your fuses, that's all the 12 volt system that sits inside the car, obviously. You've got your radiator here, so two radiators here, one for the motor inverter, one for the battery pack with fans behind. Over there, you've got your 12 volt battery and big fuses, and then as Tim comes around you can see the back which is the charger so this is a 7 kilowatt AC single phase 11 kilowatt three phase 
and also it's bi-directional which means it can also support what's called V2L vehicle to load so it can give out 7 kilowatt AC as well more uh, sorry 3 kilowatt AC as well more on that later you've got your header tanks and pumps here so this is header tank and pump for the battery system header tank and pump for the motor system and then as you can see this is your low voltage loom because high voltage is all in orange this is a low voltage loom that normally sits in the car so we've got a little simulating bracket here to kind of show where it go in the car in fact we've already put that in the car so let's have a look where it goes in the car Right, so sitting in the engine bay of the 911, you can see now this is kind of where that uh, relay and fuse box sits, and then the low voltage loom goes behind here, behind, and then right, uh, goes down this point here, but also over here is that 12 watt battery and main fuse thing that I was talking about as well. So, uh, and then you've got more of the loom coming around here for things like the motor fan controls, uh, uh, motor that goes off to the Tesla motor um, you've got your vacuum pump all sorts of other bits and pieces so that's where it sits behind my head there now this is the front battery pack and this has 50% of the kilowatt hours of the whole car if you like so this is 30 kilowatt hour battery pack in the front 30 in the rear and we've deliberately done it that way so that you can improve the weight distribution of the 911 by having a little bit more weight up front because as you probably know out there petrol 911s of this era are a little bit tail happy because most of the weight's at the back but with batteries you can treat them like ballast you can put a few more batteries up front as we've done and improve the handling um, what else do we have here we have all of the bracketry and the cable management for your high voltage going around here as well uh, you're probably wondering why there's an empty one here because we have a universal kit for the 911s but not everybody takes out all the options like this customer is not having AC so therefore there's a brackets here that you'll see that are not getting used. Now last bit on the little tour of our 911 kit is the charging because we support type 1 charging for the US, CCS rapid charging and type 2 charging for European market. But next let's fire it up. Right now comes the exciting bit. Tim's been dying to see this because he's not seen our test benches working yet. Have you? No, no, I'm looking forward to this. So I'm going to make everything live now. So I'm going to put in the service disconnect so the high voltage is live. We'll step into the cockpit now. Very aptly named. Yeah, very funny. All right, so here we are. Uh, all I need is a steering wheel now and some wheels and we can go for a spin. So first it reminds me of the uh, organist at the Blackpool Pier. Right, so let's let's accelerate the pedal. Let's put the ignition on. So this is essentially what we do for all of our kits before they go out. We just make sure that the low voltage loom and the high voltage loom is all working fine. Obviously it's tested before we even get to this point, but this just confirms everything's working and we just run the motor up and just forward, backwards brakes etc etc so I'll run you through a short form of our little test so put the ignition on first wake the system up um, we've got a complete 911 dial set here and we can even test things like the indicators so indicators coming on and off uh, we've got our BMS screen here it tells us the health of the battery pack temperature of the battery pack cells etc etc uh, you've got direction here uh, we've got charge stuff here brake light rev uh, reverse lights and fault lights so without further ado shall we put it into uh, drive mode yeah you're gonna does it drive about them <laughs> yeah well <it> doesn't <laughs> oh that's disappointing <laughs> but you'll see down there there's a drive stub in it so you can see that spin down there so if i put it into so i need the brakes on to be able to so if you if i do this you'll see the brake come on brake light oh i zoom in go on it yep so that's your brake light coming on now i can put it in d for drive take the brake off and if i put my foot on the accelerator see down there we have spinach So I'm just going to put it in reverse, there we go, that's going in reverse. Put it back into neutral again. So there we go. So normally we would do a more comprehensive test than this, but just for today, that's showing you the motor spins forward and backwards. Um, 
necessarily charging. You want to see it charging? Yeah, it's too charging. Right, let's, let's get the charger out. So this test bench doesn't just allow us to check the, whether or not the motor works and you know things like fan controls and pump controls work, but also charging as well. So I've brought over our mobile CCS charger here, so I'm going to plug this in and show you this working on the test bench. So I'm just going to choose this charger here, use that, and... Okay. So now you can see it's going through its communication protocols, safety inspections, etc., etc. So this is going to finish doing its process to allow that to start taking juice. And if Tim wants to come around the other side, or we just heard the contactors click. Oop, there you go. It's charging. So if we go now to the screen near the other side. So now at the uh, control panel, you can see you've got a nice healthy green flashing light on the charge button, which shows that the whole system is happy. And if we click here, we can see there's 17 kilowatts going in at the moment. We've turned it right down, obviously, because there's no coolant flowing through the system at the moment. But that verifies that the charge system is working absolutely fine and happy. So I'm just going to disconnect it. I've got to press that button there. Now, obviously, we test things like charging a lot more comprehensive than we just did on camera there now. But the other thing I want to show you today as well is V to L. Now, that's not a new concept to us. We've done a number of vehicles with V to L. That's vehicle to load. Things like the big black Defender that we did. Uh, actually, click on the link above if you want to see a video on that. Uh, that had a V to L to be able to charge some electric motorbikes that go in the back of the pickup or there was also a synchro camper remember the synchro camper we yeah, did the green one that had vita l in it because they had a load of three pin plug sockets internally that you could power everyday domestic items off like a lamp that we've got in front of us here now so vita l is a very useful feature you can use it to charge uh, another car up from or you know, use everyday 240 volt or 110 AC domestic items. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to take this here and this, unfortunately, some idiot ordered the wrong one because I've ordered it with a European plug on. So I'm going to have to use a uh, travel plug. So I stick that in there, which is going to a desktop lamp there. And I can plug this into there to power that lamp. So I'm going to show you how that works now. I'm going to have to go around the other side to switch VTL on first. So let me just do that. So that's VTL on. I'm just going to plug that in there now. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we shall make this lamp come on. Ta-da! <laughs> I just realised there's something missing off this test bench. What's that? What it is. What's that? It's a bed for Spud. Oh, a little dog bed. Yeah, look, he's just down here. He's always standing around watching. You need a bed on here, don't you? I'll get, get Tony to weld you a little bed on there for you, Spud, and then you can watch in peace and snore. But there we go. This is our comprehensive test bench for the 911. The only thing I've missed off that's not included in our test bench is our HVAC system. That just drops in to uh, our 911s. Uh, it's from a company called Classic Retrofit. They also supply electric air, con air conditioning systems to some pretty high end uh, 911 resto modders. Um, you can probably guess who I'm talking about. They're in the States. Um, so that's already in the car. And this kit here is actually not for that 911 there. This kit is actually for our Scandinavian partners, Vintage Volts. Um, they've got a couple of 911s to build over there and I'll put a link in the description for them uh, if you want to get in touch with those guys. So this is coming out next week and getting shipped over to Sweden because the kit for that 911 there has already been tested, which is why the low voltage loom is in there. And that is over on the benches over there. So that will get installed shortly. And that will be our next episode. So guys, stay tuned for our next episode when we'll put the kit into the 911 and you can see it in place. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.